How can great minds be produced in a country where the test of great minds is agreeing in the opinion of small minds? John Stuart Mill. The elites are planning something. Keep your friends and family aware. Like, subscribe, share these videos. We have made significant progress. We just endorsed the G20 roadmap to enhance cross-border payments, to facilitate cheaper, faster, more inclusive, and transparent payment transactions. The G20 has a roadmap that they have been working on for cross-border payments. The roadmap talks about a global stable coin. He just said payments will be cheaper, faster, inclusive, and transparent. Thus, it is essential that countries improve their use of available resources and partner with the private sector to promote infrastructure investment. This year, the G20 established a collaboration with the private sector. The governments of the world are working with the private sector. I am often asked, Darren, why would they give us this opportunity? It's simple. The private sector has developed the technology for them. They didn't have enough time to develop it from scratch. They outsourced the problem and now the private sector has come up with the solution that enables us to take advantage. What is the need for a CBDC? Today's financial systems are complex, inefficient, and dated. While consumer finance applications simplify the user experience and simulate real-time payments, money transferred on these applications can take days to actually settle. That's because the underlying payment rails are a patchwork of legacy systems that have evolved over time, but have never been rebuilt for our modern digital economy. This video is from Consensus. They are an organization working with the Ethereum blockchain to develop solutions for central banks. There are advantages for central banks and governments to utilize crypto assets and to utilize CBDCs. They will have more options with monetary policy. They're Keynesian economists, and their solution is more debt. CBDCs will allow interest rates to go negative. CBDCs will allow stimulus airdrops. It will allow the shenanigans to continue. Build a more resilient and inclusive economy. A crisis is an opportunity. Our research shows that public investment especially in green projects and digital infrastructure, can be a game changer with the potential to create millions of new jobs, well-paying jobs, while boosting productivity, raising incomes. Digital infrastructure is efficiency. The more efficient an economy is, the more goods and services that could be sold. The more goods and services, the more jobs we develop. It needs the framework for the technology to grow. Open platforms that are able to host any software from any developer. The more innovation, the more efficiency, the better off our economy will be. With that being said, they're going to use this tech to enforce their agenda and exploit us. That is why it's important to understand the tech that they are rolling out. This would yield substantial benefits for households in developing countries and increase the presence of small and medium enterprises in the international trading system, benefiting emerging and advanced economies alike. Efficiency, my friends. Technology is going to help the economies evolve. Globalization is what they want, and today's technology suits this perfectly. To increase the uptake of technology and infrastructure sector, and utilize the benefits, the G20, with the support of relevant international organizations, developed the G20 Riyadh Infratech Agenda, which was endorsed by the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors this July. The G20 Infratech Agenda is a high-level policy guidance for national authorities and international community to advance the adoption of new and existing technologies and infrastructure to reap its benefit. The laws are not in place. They can't act on everything yet. We have an opportunity to buy cheap because they don't have the laws ready. Domestically, all nations need to update their laws. Once this happens, the G20 is ready for their global stable coin. Deal with the debt. Global public debt is projected to reach a record high 100% of GDP level in 2021. This is partially because countries are doing the right thing. They're boosting spending to fight the crisis and secure the recovery. Addressing this issue over the medium term 
will be critical. But for many low-income countries, it has to be done urgently. It has to be done now. Given their heavy debt burden already, they are struggling to maintain vital policy support. They need access to more grants, more concessional credits, and debt relief. More than ever, we need each other. We need strong international cooperation, especially in vaccine development and distribution. If we do it, and we do it fast, then we can speed up the recovery. It could add almost 9 trillion to global income by 2025. The debt is a speed gauge on all this. GDP to debt ratio is how we spell out hyperinflation. The higher the debt is compared to GDP, the more of a problem we have. As I have explained earlier, the tech makes this efficient. The quicker the nations of the world can sell their goods and services, the better off they are. The undeveloped nations are having the highest debt to GDP ratios. That's why it's more urgent for them. Tech is their way out of this, and we are watching debts and deficits explode. Sooner or later, they won't have a choice. They'll need to flip the switch. The, uh, the G20 countries have injected an unprecedented 11 trillion US dollar into the global economy, the largest support in record and over four times what was provided in the global financial crisis. In addition, in April, the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors endorsed the G20 action plan supporting the global economy through COVID pandemic, which provides a comprehensive set of commitments aimed to safeguarding and ultimately rebuilding the economy. There is a wall to this infinite inflation. They're going to take this money and push, push, push for technology. Why? Because they know that this is a house of cards. It's about to fall and the tech is the to extend the Ponzi scheme. If tech can't extend the Ponzi scheme, it's useful in a gold-backed system because gold's issue is deflationary versus inflationary. And this tech can complement deflation just as much as inflation. Central banks can leverage networks of smart contracts in their CBDC system to define and drive monetary policy, adjustment of interest rates, control of money supply, or direct issuance of stimulus payments to individuals could all be facilitated using this technology. A reimagined retail bank would be a custodian of e-wallets and offer customer support as well as new innovative products and services built on open source infrastructure. Complete control over monetary policy. That is the motivation for CBDCs. In the future, banks are going to be the holders of crypto assets and CBDCs. Your bank is going to custody your wallets because the average Joe can't handle a 24 word seed phrase in case you pass to monitor you. The majority of sheep will keep their assets nice and safe at their banks. While responsible technological innovation can deliver significant benefits to the financial system and the broader economy, we are closely monitoring developments and remain vigilant to existing and emerging risks. As debt climbs, the benefits look more attractive. They can test all they want, but they have painted themselves into a corner. If debts were as low as they were 20 years ago, I wouldn't be that bullish on this tech. But the debt is a powder keg, and it's going to make this all happen, and happen quick. We end with another Russian, Fyodor Dostoevsky, who wrote, Only one thing matters, to be able to dare. A crisis like no other calls for recovery like no other. We must dare to face our most daunting challenge together. We must dare to take the right actions now. To be able to dare, central banks are supposed to keep economies stable, not jump into speculative crypto assets. I guess the ends justify the means. As we all know, infrastructure plays a significant role in promoting economic recovery, sustainable development, and resilience. Despite G20 efforts in promoting investment in infrastructure, the gap in financing the infrastructure investment remains significant for both developed and developing economies. 
to improve the infrastructure financing in terms of both quantity and quality. The G20 under the Saudi presidency worked on two priorities. First, utilizing the benefits of technology for infrastructure. Second, continue the work on the G20 roadmap to infrastructure as an asset class with a focus on improving regulatory framework for private sector participation. The G20 is going to label infrastructure as an asset class with a focus on improving regulatory frameworks for the private sector participation. We agree that no so-called global stable coin should commence operation until all relevant legal, regulatory, and oversight requirements are adequately addressed through appropriate design and by adhering to applicable standards. The global stablecoin isn't going to be operational until the standards are set and the world can agree on it. Just the fact that the G20 has a stablecoin on the agenda is massive evidence that the Internet of Value is coming. A world of central bank digital currencies is coming. 80% of central banks are exploring CBDCs, with some countries, including China, fully committed to the vision. This world is being updated. The efficiency that this technology offers cannot be ignored. The world is moving towards the Internet of Value. Understand how tiny the market cap is for crypto, and then compare it to the U.S. stock market. Crypto is a 200 billion market cap, while the U.S. stock market is 30 plus trillion dollars. There is immense opportunity. Gold and silver is real money. The purchasing power is preserved with gold and silver. You will never be hungry, but crypto is the potential for gains. On interna international taxation, G20 ministers and governors have agreed on the way forward, including the timeline in which we commit to reaching a consensus based, based up solution to address the tax challenges arising from the digitalization of the economy. We should have known. Taxation of the digital economy is the delay, but by mid-2021, they have committed to a decision. The debt bubble is the ticking time bomb. I don't think they have till mid-2021, but if I'm wrong, I'm prepared to wait. It is better to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. Better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. And if the fool or the pig is of different opinion, it is only because they only know their own side of the question. John Stuart Mill. If you think that they can save the system, IRAs have some real tax advantages. iTrust Capital offers IRAs with gold, silver, and your favorite cryptocurrencies. The link is in the description of my video. If you enjoy my work and want to help me create new videos, please consider joining my Patreon. Thank you for liking and subscribing.